Hey guys. So, so far we've talked a lot about how markets efficiently allocate resources. For example, we've talked about how it can at least Pareto efficiently allocate in our example economy, capital and labor to the production of food and shelter. Okay. But the examples we've covered so far are missing a lot of crucial components of the economy. In particular, they miss uncertainty and they miss the time dimension. So we've considered the case where, you know, you can allocate 50 robots to producing food or shelter. But what if you also have the opportunity to hold some of those robots back, not have them produce food or shelter at all, but instead build more robots? That means you get less food and shelter today, but it's easier to build more in the future. Okay. Or conversely, instead of just having one type of food, suppose you've got the option to grow multiple kinds of food and they have different characteristics. So some of this uh, some of the seed varieties you've got will grow really strongly if there's a rainy season, but if there's a drought, you're out of luck and uh, the whole crop is lost. On the other hand, you've got sort of a different crop that it's never going to have a really great payoff, but it's also safer and it will be drought resistant. How do you think about the trade-off of how much to of your you know arable land to devote to one or the other? So today, or at least in the next 10 minutes, we'll talk about how the economic framework uh, that we've used, studied so far is used to study these situations too. Okay, so let's begin by thinking about how we would ad approach just a, uh, a standard kind of problem where we have preferences over two goods, food and shelter. As we've discussed uh, earlier, we model our preferences over these with indifference curves, okay? These things track the trade-off between having a lot of shelter and a lot of food or some mix between the two, okay? And we can see here that, you know, if we have, uh, if we this might be utility equal to one, utility equal to two, utility equal to three, so... As we have more food and more shelter, we're better off, okay? If we have a lot of food, but very little shelter, we're indifferent as drawn here between that and having a lot of shelter, but very little food. All right, let's introduce the question of time. So suppose we're making a decision about how much food to have today. So I've drawn food instead of shelter down here. And we also have the option of saving some of that and eating it tomorrow. Well, we can think of these as just two more goods that we have preferences over. It's a little lumpy line, but it's supposed to be the same roughly. The idea here is, you know, we can just label this exactly the same. These treat these just like any other good. All right. In this case, this person uh, is happier if they have more food today and tomorrow. But if they have to choose and trade off between having a lot today and a lot tomorrow, well, if they have a lot of food tomorrow, but only a little bit today, they're indifferent between that and having a lot of food today, but only a little tomorrow. And uh, they're also indifferent between having sort of less of each, but no major inequality. Uh, okay, so we just think about it the same way if it's over time. What about if it's over, uh, you know, how do we deal with uncertainty in this? Well, now our two goods are the amount of food we consume in two different states of the world. So we've got food in the world where it's rainy, where we have a good rain, and we've got food in the state of the world where there's a drought. All right, and as before, we can draw just utility preferences and indifference curves over these states of the world. What's this telling us? Well, as before, we could say, hey, this guy is, they would prefer to have more food in either state of the world, but if they've got to take a gamble, well, you know, as I've drawn it here, this person would prefer, would be indifferent between having a lot of food in the rainy world and a little food if it if there's a drought and vice versa, but they would also prefer maybe uh, a safe option. They'd be indifferent between that where they have less of each, but no major inequality. Okay, so just because things are uncertain over their different time, we don't actually have to think of it differently. Okay, 
Notice though that in those diagrams, the first one I've got two different kinds of goods, food and shelter. And in the other ones, I also have two different kinds of goods, but they're both, they're always, it's always in terms of food, but the good is now food tomorrow or food today or shelter, I mean, sorry, or food in one state of the world where it rains a lot and food in another state of the world where it doesn't rain a lot. So we don't need to make our life more complicated. We could think about a lot more options. We could think about food today if it rains versus shelter tomorrow if there's a drought versus xyz and there's actually like this explosion of possibilities but we're not going to focus on that because it didn't really give us any extra intuition we're going to zero in on just the aspect that we want to study and in this section we're going to study time and we're going to study uncertainty so we're going to just look at one good and we're not going to look at food or shelter we're going to look at something even more general than that we're going to just look at consumption which is what we call just sort of stuff you can almost think of it as just money okay how much money for example do you want today versus tomorrow how much money do you want in one state of the world versus another okay so we introduce this uh let me get this screen out of here we're going to introduce consumption which we're going to denote with the letter c and the utility function is just just has one argument now, C. So that's supposed to be U in, with a C in parentheses. And if we're going to draw this, we no longer really need two axes, okay? Because having more consumption is always better. But we'll find it's actually useful to start drawing something else. So on the vertical axis, we'll put utility. And we'll start drawing figures like this, where this is the utility function, okay? All right, that's all I want to say in this video, that we can study uh, uncertainty or time using kind of the same framework as before. And instead of the goods being different kinds of things you can handle, they're more abstract now, but otherwise preferences work roughly the same. That's it.